So one of the most fundamental and important laws in classical physics is the law of conservation of momentum. Now this law is applicable for microscopic as well as macroscopic objects. So this law can be described using the following statement. So essentially, if no external forces are acting on our system of objects, well then the total momentum of our system of objects will remain constant. So let's see exactly what that means by looking at the following example. Let's suppose we have object 1, particle 1, with mass 1 traveling in the positive direction along the x-axis, and its initial velocity is v1. Now, at the same time, a second particle with mass m2 is traveling in the negative direction along the x-axis with initial velocity v2. Now, eventually, these two particles will collide and they will bounce back and travel in opposite directions. So the final velocity of object 1 with mass m1 is v1 prime. And the final velocity after collision of object 2, our particle 2 with mass m2, is v2 prime. Now, what this law of conservation of momentum states is the following. If we sum up the momenta of our object before collision, that sum will be exactly identical to the sum of the momenta after the collision. And that's given by the following formula. Recall that momentum is simply mass times velocity of the object. So the momenta before the sum is equal to m1 times v1 plus m2 times v2 equals the momenta or the sum of the momenta after m1 v1 prime plus m2 v2 prime. Now, notice this sum is equal to a constant, this sum is equal to a constant, and those two constants are exactly identical. And that's exactly what the law states, that our total momentum of the system of objects, these two particles, remains constant. Now notice I can take these two terms and bring them both to the left side, and we get the following equation. So this basically states that the change of momentum of object 1 plus the change in momentum of object 2 is equal to 0. And that's exactly what we have in this equation. So this is the law of conservation of momentum. Now let's try to derive this law from Newton's second law of motion. Recall that Newton's second law of motion is force or the net force acting on the object is equal to mass times acceleration, which is equal to the derivative of our momentum function with respect to time. Now, let's examine what actually takes place when our two particles collide. Well, Newton's third law of motion tells us that particle 1 and particle 2 exert equal but opposite forces on one another. So this is Newton's third law of motion. So we can use this fact and Newton's second law of motion to derive this equation. So if we sum up all the forces acting on our system of two objects, we get the following sum. The force create or the force exerted on object 2 by object 1 minus the force exerted on object 1 by object 2 is equal to 0. So because this force has the same magnitude as this force, it points in opposite direction because of Newton's third law of motion. If I sum up these two forces, since they point along the same axis, the sum will equal to 0. Now, by using Newton's second law of motion, we can rewrite each of these forces using the following representation. So, the force created by object 1 on object 2 is written as our derivative of our momentum of object 1 with respect to time. And that's exactly what we do with this derivative of our object's 2 momentum with respect to time. So, 
I can combine them in the following way. And notice I have momentum 1 minus momentum 2 or change in momentum 1 minus change in momentum 2 and that equals 0. And that's exactly what we have. So this implies this the change in momentum of object 1 plus the change in momentum of object 2 is equal to 0 and that's exactly identical to this equation. So once again we derived the conservation of momentum law using Newton's second law of motion. Now this implies that our P1 momentum of object 1 plus momentum of object 2 is equal to a constant as long as we have an isolated system in which we have no external forces acting on our objects. So let's look at one application. Let's look at the following example. Let's suppose a 20,000 kilogram train with velocity 30 meters per second collides head on with another car at rest with the same exact mass. Now if they move away together, find the final velocity. So I have object 2 is stationary, my object 1 is moving in the positive direction along the x-axis with initial velocity of 30 meters per second and after collision they both move off with the same velocity. So we want to calculate what this velocity is. So we can use this equation where v1 prime and v2 prime are the same exact velocity because they move away together. So after they collide, it's as if they're one object. So that means we can write the following formula. Uh, mass of object 1 times velocity 1 plus mass of object 2 times velocity 2 is equal to the sum of their masses multiplied by the velocity. So notice we can plot or we can solve for velocity by bringing the mass and the sum of the masses over and that's exactly what we get. So because V2 is 0, we simply have M1 times V1 divided by the sum of their mass and we get 20,000 kilograms multiplied by 30 meters per second divided by the sum of their masses, which is twice their mass, is equal to uh, 15 meters per second. So this is the velocity of the objects, both of the objects, after they collide. So we can see how this law can come in very handy.